This is a technique that can be used to solve a bunch of maths problems, but actually you don't really see this so much in A-levels and rarely see it in the MAT or the TMUA. So if you're preparing for your Oxford or Cambridge maths interview, this is a problem you definitely want to try. My name is Jamin, I study maths at the University of Oxford, and now I help students all across the globe who are looking to get into studying maths at these top universities. We have a termite which starts in the central block of a 3 by 3 by 3 cube of wooden block. It can chew through any face to enter an adjacent block, but will not visit the same block more than once and will not walk around the outside of the cube. We want to determine if it is possible for the termite to chew through every block. This is a really, really interesting problem because it's not as if we can apply the quotient rule or you know the sine double angle formula or anything like that to this problem. This is a really interesting one. I'm going to encourage you to pause the video, video and give this problem a go for yourself. And if you are preparing for the Oxford and Cambridge interviews, try and talk out loud. Try and explain how you would go through this. And then come back to this video and see how I explain it as well. So I'm going to kind of do this as if I was an interviewee. But I'm going to skip a couple of steps just because it kind of depends on who you are as a student, whether you would spot the things that I spot or not. But let's imagine this question has just been read out to me as the, uh, and I, uh, by the interviewer to me, and I'm going to answer this. Okay, amazing. So just to clarify, we've got kind of this, this termite living in essentially like a Rubik's cube kind of thing, where we've got a three by three cube. Um, I kind of try my best to draw it out here, but sort of like this and then like that. So there's 27 small cubes in total. Would I, would I be correct in saying that? And the interviewer would say, yep, that, that's absolutely correct. Okay, and it starts in the, the one in the middle, the one that we, well, one of the ones that we can't really see here. And so it can only travel through the faces of the cube. And we want to see if it can get to every cube without repeating one. Okay, interesting. Now, my first thoughts that come to my mind is maybe I could just try and envision some paths. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult because this is a 3D cube and my 3D sketching skills aren't that great. But I can maybe try and envision it and see if it's possible. That's one thought. And then obviously, if, if I do that, I can either see if it is possible, in which case, great, we're done. But I actually suspect that you've given me this because it's not possible. And I need to somehow prove that it's not possible. So once I've tried a few, and if I see that it's not possible, maybe I need to start to think about why. But let me first at least experiment with this and see. So maybe the way I'll do this is by splitting this into three different layers. So... If I think about a top layer, like this, almost like a noughts and crosses grid, this will be the top. And in fact, I think I can just copy and paste this. Perfect. Like so. Just zoom. Uh, scroll down a bit. So this is the top, the middle, and the bottom. And we're going to start here. The termite starts there. Okay, my first thought is maybe what we could do is skip up the jump up to the top layer and try and cover all of that so if i'm in the middle of my rubik's cube here take like the elevator up to the top and then i can easily kind of go around and get all of these cubes taken care of and then if i go from here down one layer to the middle of to the to the like from this square through to this uh, square or cube sorry then i can go around and get every single one in the middle because we've already uh, used the middle one the middle of the middle square that is and then we can jump down to the bottom cube at uh, the bottom layer sorry and i feel that maybe i should just be able to get all of them like oh hold on a second maybe we can't because i can see here the dilemma is i could get all these squares all these cubes in but then here i can either go this way or i can go this way but i won't be able to get both of those hmm interesting now from my experience doing similar problems to this before when the most intuitive kind of path doesn't work or when a reasonable uh, path doesn't work, it probably means that the problem is actually impossible. So here, I suspect that we actually can't visit every cube. And now I've actually seen a similar problem before. And I think this actually might be useful is to color in these squares a bit like a chessboard. So if I just get rid of my annotations here, what I can do is if I use red squares here, like so, a bit like a chessboard, but now we're going to imagine kind of it being stacked. So this square 
for example, is directly above this square. And because we want them to be different colors, this one will be white. And so this one will be red, this one will be red, this will be red, this will be red. And similarly on the bottom, we're going to get red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, like so. All I've done is colored in these cubes. And the reason for this is because, uh, and the reason that this strategy may work, or I suspect it will work, is because we're going from, whenever we move, no matter how this termite moves, he's always going to be moving either from a white square to a red square. So for example, at the start, no matter whether he goes up, left, down, right, or if he jumps up to the, this square or to this square, they're all red. So all the neighboring shells are red. But similarly, if, you're on a, if he's on a red square, let's, oh, let me not use black, let's, let's pick this one here. If he's on here, he can either move here, here, or down to the corresponding square here. So if he was here, he could either move there, there, or there. But all of those are white squares. So that kind of illustrates, or at least shows you, that going from one colored square, you always have to go to the next. Which means that if it was possible for this termite to visit every single one of these squares, or small cubes, because they start on a white square, they then have to go to a red square, then they'd have to go to a white square, then they'd have to go to a red, then white, then red, then white, then red, and so on. Which seems fine, except for the fact that we have a total of 14 red squares and 13 white squares. And we can never actually properly complete this list because if we think about it, all the whites and reds come in pairs like so. So we would certainly be able to get 13 pairs of whites and reds. So imagine we had 13 pairs of whites and reds. But then the issue is once we get to the end, we, we, the next letter would have to be white which would mean we'd have to have a 14th white before we have a 14th red. But here the issue is we want 14 reds and 13 whites, not 14 whites and 13 reds. And thus, it's actually impossible to get to every single square. However, this actually does give me an idea that if we, instead of starting at this middle square, we started on a red square. So let's say we started over here. I have a feeling that we should be able to get to all of these. So if I just give that a try, there to there, and then I, I jump down a layer there, and then I could go, let's say like that, and then go from here to here, and then yeah, perfect. I can visit all the squares. So the issue is because we started on a white square, we won't ever be able to uh, visit all of the cubes. Perfect, end of scene. That is an ideal response to this problem, and I'm gonna try and explain why. Because it's all good and well me saying this and then you trying to memorize word for word exactly what I said, but that's not what I suggest. What were the key things? Firstly, I, used the, I mentioned the fact that I'd seen a similar problem before and mentioned the strategy there and why it might be useful. The why is such a big thing. You always want to keep the interviewer, you always want to keep the interviewer's thoughts in mind. The way I analogize this or think about this is imagine you're holding a torch. You're holding that torch to show the interviewer where you're going. So you're not just reading out what you're writing or saying what you're about, like saying what you're doing. You're saying what you're doing, why you're doing it, what you're about to do, what the next few, few steps are. So they know the direction you're heading in as well. And they can feel confident in your, in your, in your steps as well. Now, obviously it helped that I'd seen a similar problem before. If, if I hadn't, then, you know, they may have given me some hints, given me some guidance. But this is just testament to show that the, doing lots and lots and lots of problems is good because you'll see a trick in one problem and you'll see that that trick might be useful in another one. And once you see it a few times, you'll start to recognize patterns within that trick and when to use it. So here I've done enough of these kind of checkerboard problems where the trick is to kind of uh, uh, color it like a, che a chessboard to, uh, to solve it and then think about parity uh, in the moves. That's one thing. Firstly, also, uh, sorry, another thing is that I, I kind of laid out my ideas at the start. So I said, okay, one thing I could do is just test some routes, some possible routes. I think I only ended up testing, up testing out one in the end. But I said two things. I said either the route works and that's the problem solved. We can show that the termite can visit every square or it doesn't work, in which case I suspect, so I gave them, um, I guess what I was thinking, I suspect or I would suspect that maybe the, pro the problem is impossible. We cannot visit every single square. So I gave the interview again some insight into my thoughts as well. So if this is something that you're looking to benefit from, uh, this kind of in-depth analysis of how to solve these problems, I'm currently running an interview preparation program. There's only a few spots left. 
If that is something you're interested in, I'll leave a link for that in the description below. But if you're just looking for free advice as well, that's totally fine. I'll be producing more of these videos where I kind of go into an in-depth analysis of how we actually solve these problems, how we not just solve them from a maths point of view, but how do we explain our thoughts and ideas as if it were an interview problem as well. So I'll leave a video on screen where I solve another interview style problem for maths. I'll go and see you over there.